In this video, we're looking at a classic beam and cable problem. So we have a heavy beam connected to a wall by a hinge at its left end. It's suspended horizontally by this cable that sticks up at a 35 degree angle. The beam itself has a mass of 15 kilograms and there's an additional attached mass of 8.5 kilograms. And what we're looking for in the problem is the tension in the cable and the force exerted by the hinge. Now a good place to start here is to just get all the qualitative force vectors and vector components into the diagram. So we'll start with the weight vectors and that includes the weight of the hanging mass and the weight of the beam itself. Notice that I attached the weight vector for this uniform beam at its center and the reason I did this is that the torque exerted by gravity can be computed as if all the weight is concentrated at the center of mass and I'll post the link to the video where that was first derived. So it doesn't hurt to just get numbers onto these weights in the picture. And the weight of this hanging mass is given by, I'll call it a little mg. We take the mass of 8.5 kilograms and multiply it by g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And this gives us a weight of 83.3 newtons. We do the same thing with the center of mass of the beam. We had 15 kilograms. I'll call this big mg because it's a larger mass. We had 15 kilograms. 9.8 meters per second squared for G. This gives us 147 newtons for the weight of the beam itself. And again, for the purpose of computing the torque exerted by gravity on that beam, we pretend all the mass is concentrated at that center of mass. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and label the distance between the hinge and the center of mass. The entire beam is 1.5 meters long, so the center of mass occurs at 0.75 meters. So that will be the lever arm for the torque exerted by gravity on the beam with respect to the hinge. Now the force exerted on the beam by the tension in the cable is the next obvious thing to fill in here. And that isn't known, so we're going to just call it T. And we're going to need the components of T. So the perpendicular component is the one that's responsible for exerting a torque with respect to that hinge. And the parallel component pulls to the left on the beam and that influences the horizontal component of the hinge force. We're going to call those components Ty and Tx, respectively. Next, we want to put in the components of the hinge force. And just starting with the x component here, if I look at all the forces acting on this beam, there's only one other force that's horizontal, and it's Tx pulling to the left. This means that Fx, the horizontal component of the hinge force, must push to the right, since all the forces have to add to zero on this thing for it to stay in static equilibrium. So there's the horizontal component of the hinge force. But which way does the vertical component of the hinge force point? This isn't entirely obvious. One way to handle it is to just think about it intuitively. What if we took the hinge away? Which way would this beam start to slide? And I think it's pretty clear just based on physical intuition that it would slide down the wall. That means the hinge force vertical component must be pointing up to counteract that. And that's actually the right answer, but there's a more precise way to argue it. So what we could do is just temporarily take the right end of the beam as our rotation axis. And we know the net torque about any rotation axis must vanish for this thing to be in static equilibrium. So the tension's out of the picture here because it's sitting right on the rotation axis. And I see a counterclockwise torque exerted by gravity at the center of mass and at the location of the hanging mass. That means we must get a clockwise torque exerted by the hinge. And that tells us the Y component of the hinge force is upward. So our original physical intuition was correct. And we'll call that vertical component FY. Okay, so the setup for the problem is complete and we can start answering the questions. In part A, we want the tension in the cable by using a torque analysis about the hinge. And so we're going to take a rotation axis located at the hinge. I'll just write a little RA on that as a reminder. That's the rotation axis for the torque analysis. The hinge force components don't exert any torque with respect to that rotation axis since they're attached to the rotation axis and the lever arm is zero. All I have is a clockwise torque exerted by the hanging mass, by gravity acting at the center of mass of the beam, and then a counterclockwise torque exerted by the Y component of the tension. And to be in equilibrium, we must have that the sum of all the torques in the clockwise direction is equal to the sum of all the torques in the counterclockwise direction. And then we just plug in all the clockwise torques. Well, for the hanging mass, that was a weight of 83.3 newtons exerted through a lever arm of 0.5 meters, and that's clockwise. For gravity acting on the center of mass of the beam, we have 147 newtons through a lever arm of 0.75 meters. 
And that's all our clockwise torques. That has to be equal to the counterclockwise torque exerted by the tension. That's given by the perpendicular component Ty multiplied by the length of the beam 1.5. And what we should do here is just note in the picture that Ty is equal to T times the sine of theta. So I have a T sine 35 through a lever arm of 1.5 meters. The only unknown left in this is T itself. So I'm just going to add up the numbers on the left side of this and then divide by 1.5 times the sine of 35 and we'll get our tension. And this comes out to about 176.6 newtons. And I normally round things to three sig figs so I could write it as 177 newtons. And there's our tension. In part B, we want the magnitude of the force exerted by the hinge. Now this requires us to find each component of the hinge force and then use the Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude of the total force. And for this, we can use a force analysis in the x direction and a force analysis in the y direction. So we know to be in static equilibrium, the sum of all forces in the x direction must be zero. In other words, the forces to the right must be equal to the forces to the left. And again, I have the rightward component of the hinge force as my only rightward pointing force and then the leftward component of the tension is my only left pointing force. So the x component of the hinge force is just equal to the x component of the tension. That Tx is just T cosine theta. And now that we have T, I can just plug that in. I'll go ahead and keep the extra sig fig and call it 176.6 cosine of 35 degrees. And I get 144.6 newtons for that component. We do the same thing in the y direction. The sum of all the forces in the y direction must be equal to zero. In other words, if I add together all the upward components, I have to get the same magnitude as when I add together all the downward components. So we'll start with the upward components. I have Fy, the y component of the hinge force, plus Ty. And then my downward forces, I had 83.3 newtons from the hanging mass and a 147 from the beam itself. So all we have to do is subtract Ty from both sides and we have our y component of the hinge force. That's going to be 83.3 plus 147 minus Ty, which again was T sine theta or 176.6 sine 35. When we run the numbers on this, we get 129.0 newtons. Now finally, we have to put these two components together. So we have our horizontal component Fx, our vertical component Fy. We add those head to tail, and we're trying to get this total force, the hinge force, the force exerted by the hinge on the left end of the rod. So those two components are perpendicular, so they add with the Pythagorean theorem. And we were just asked for the magnitude here, not the angle. So the hinge force is going to be the square root of Fx squared plus Fy squared. We plug in the magnitudes of the components. So I have a 144.6 squared plus a 129 squared. And when I run the numbers on this to three significant digits, I get 194 newtons. And we're done. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.